Hi everyone, welcome to week four. Um, I hope you've had a great Easter with your families, that you haven't eaten too much chocolate, um, that it's been relatively um, sickness free um, and that if you went away you had a great time away. I know that we have got enough chocolate to um, last us for weeks. So anyway, happy Easter and welcome back to study. So this week we are going to be looking at pedagogical approaches and how we use these to inform our teaching and planning in the classroom. Um, we need to work out how to use these approaches to help us deliver creative art experiences. So in chapter six of our readings, we're really focusing on theory and what this looks like practically in the educational setting. Um, there is a little bit of a focus on um, Reggio Emilia, so read up on that. Um, and what his approach is about. So really, um, it's focusing on the fact that children come in and they're not empty vessels. Um, they have got um, skills and they're artists in their own right. So I think it's really important that as an educator you can come into your classroom and you can um, really identify the skills that your, your children that are under your care have. You might have a child who um, is really quiet but is really good at reflection. Um, a child who loves to do some painting. You might have a child who, that was my daughter saying me, me, me. Um, you might have a child who loves to have a laugh. And um, you, um, you know, he's always a larrikin, but he can tell a really good joke. You might have a child who, um, what's another way, um, who loves to dance and might like break dancing, you know, those boys. So, you know, it's about, it's about really looking at how you can channel the artistic expression within the children yeah. under your care. Um, and I think that is half our job, isn't it, to um, see the talent that is within each child and help them to unlock that talent and, and grow within that talent. So um, in our readings, um, it, in our readings it really goes through um, how do you, uh, for any creative project, some steps to take. And so she goes through that you need to prepare. You need to have, um, get your attention um, to what it is you're doing and is it going to be safe. You need to, you know, sort of slow cook your idea. Get it, um, get the juices flowing, get the ideas out. You need to have your aha moment. Um, you go, ah, oh, that's what I want to do. Yep, it's going to work. It's going to be great. And I'm sure a lot of you in your um, early childhood um, platforms have those moments. I have them all the time in the classroom that you go, oh, that's going to work great. That will really lead into, you know, inquiry-based learning or play-based learning um, to help me get to from A to B. Um, you need to verify things. So you need to work out all the details. What are all the details that are involved in order to do it? Um, you then need to go back and, and reapply all your ideas um, and reshape them, see how they need to be reshaped. And then she says as well that uh, you need to have reflection. So you need to be able to support students to develop the ability to investigate, reflect and evaluate um, their learning and and I think that goes for us as well that it's you know as we create activities are we able to reflect back on and evaluate um, the creative experiences that we give our children so this week um, you need to find or create um, a creative arts experience um, a resource that you can incorporate into an experience for young children so um, you know, it might be a dancing resource, it might be a music resource. I've already seen a few really great ideas on the discussion boards and I really look forward to um, seeing a few more. This is really um, interrelated into your folio. It will be really useful for your folio. Um, and not just for your folio, for uni, but also um, your teaching career in general. I think these kind of things are great. I still use, I remember at uni I did a drama um, unit and it was the best unit I did at uni and I still use some of those ideas within my own classroom. 
Um, and we had to create a folio of stuff and every week we had to do a different resource exactly like you guys I didn't go to Swinburne I actually went to Deakin back in the day but um it's a resource that I use and so what you're creating is not just an assessment it's actually a folio that you can draw from and you can use in your own um, experience in the um, early childhood uh, space um, you need to post your resource and include your um, the pedagogical approach that underpins it. So is it play-based learning? Is it inquiry-based learning? Um, those kind of ideas. Third thing, hey, group six and seven. This is something I really want you to try and do for me this week is not just to post, but I'd really like you to also reply to someone else. So look at someone else's post. Um, you need to write a benefit of their resource and you need to write down what age you think is, it is applicable for. So remember we're focusing on early years. Um, so early years is zero to eight. So it's about to grade two. So any older than that, you're really, um, for the purposes of this um, unit, you need to be looking at early years. So um, I am going to redo one of my little art projects that I did with my students in grade two at the time. We, uh, we were looking at an inquiry unit of change and how things change over time. We're looking at life cycles and how they change. And we were reading the story of the very hungry caterpillar and how a caterpillar changes from, um, you know, a caterpillar to a butterfly. Um, and we found this beautiful website. I know I've put it up, I think, in group six. I could be wrong. Um, but we found this um, beautiful picture um, and slideshow about how Eric Carle creates his pictures. Um, and he does it using tissue paper. He paints all the tissue paper first, um, lets it dry, rips it all up, and then creates something um, creates an animal or a picture using the tissue paper. So we did that as a class and it probably took us half oh, half a day to a day, including drawing time. And they were fantastic. And I have to admit, I know, Nick, I said that I would find it and I can't. Um, I've looked in my portfolio. I have um, looked in um, one of my hard drives and I can't find it anywhere. So. My promise to you is that I'm going to recreate it for you. I'm going to recreate it for you this week to show you what it looks like and what to do. I'll do it with my girls as a little activity. Um, but it really explored patterns. It explored materials and painting and how patterns can be different patterns and different things can be used to make a picture, um, as well as just really consolidating what they've learned in terms of life cycles. So they had to pick their own um, insect. So that's one way that I have used um, a creative art experience in my own classroom um, to really embed inquiry, the inquiry learning um, and things like that. Now my daughter has got this amazing portfolio that she got, um, that got brought home and uh, so many great things in here. I love her kinder teacher. She's amazing. Um, but something that they did the other week, I wanted to show you, excuse me, so I'm going to just go up here. So they did some bubble printing, so exploring um, the bumpy surface of the bubble wrap um, and to make patterns. So, and then in another week, I'm trying to not just show my child here, not other people's children, but they explore clay. So they actually got a potter to come in and with the potting potter's wheel and explore clay and then they actually got to they got to create some of their own um, their own creatures using clay and it was incredible hey Bella can you just go and get me your butterfly made of clay can you do that for me I'm just gonna ask my daughter to get the clay because I want to show you what it looks like quickly go get the butterfly it's on the speaker um, and so she really enjoyed um, not only understanding what the potter's wheel does and how, to, how you can make something and manipulate objects come up here, um, but she actually made this. Yeah. 
Can you tell everyone what it is? Um, clay. Yes. Yeah, um, but it's a clay. But what did you make? Butterfly. And how did you make it? What did you use? Um, potter's wheel. Pot you didn't use a potter's wheel for this though, did you? I made it all by myself without any help. You just can make your own creation. Oh, so did you have to roll? Do you have no, to do any rolling? You could just bend them. You could do whatever you want. Oh. So that is her butterfly that she made. So that's another way that you can use a creative process. Um, Mom, I need to go to the Off you go. Um, that's one way that you can use the creative process in the classroom to get them to understand. Mom, I'm going to hang this for the Christmas tree. And I need a little thing okay. from the bees. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was just a really great activity whereby um, they were able to be creative, uh, that the, um, the Play With Clay man who came, um, you know, told them that, you know, they felt different textures of clay, they um, talked about how it's got to be put in a kiln, and then they all got to use their fingers and use different tools to create something themselves. So we've got a turtle, we've got a butterfly, we've got a mushroom, and we've got a bowl. Um, so that's a really great experience. Sorry I've rambled this week, but I just wanted to share a few things and a, a few ideas for you. Really looking forward to seeing um, what you come up with. And this is really important, really. If you can do this, Mommy, then that's one activity Mom. you've got done for your folio. Mama, hang on a second, I'm sweetheart. Stop. I'm going to hang this up for the Christmas tree. Yeah, and, and please, I just really want to encourage you to um, reply. Uh, that's really important. Have a great week for... Thanks for listening. Sorry about the interruptions, but at least you can see I'm normal too. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.